Yo, Cam and Mace, especially Mace and Betta, took us to church today. It's Jay Midnight, and today we're going to talk about how choices lead you down paths, but life and what you're supposed to do with it and destiny are two different things, meaning you have your life, but before you even came to the earth, God had a purpose for you. And when you're on the earth, you can choose to go the way your spirit and your conscience is calling you, or you can choose to go against it. And the choices you make will lead you away or towards your purpose. And so here, Mace is proposing the idea for about Kobe's situation. So his parents are putting his championship ring up for auction. Now, it's known that Kobe and his parents didn't have a good relationship because of, I guess part of it was because he chose to marry Vanessa. And in the beginning, he was young and they didn't really, she, he was he was promising talent, you know, a champion. He's about to be a champion. And he's just 18, whatever, however old he was, and just picks up this girl, Vanessa. And they're thinking, you have your whole life in front of you. So you know that beef between parents when they're not really liking your partner or whatever. But anyway, so now they're selling the ring. And obviously, probably because they need money. But what Mace proposes is that his parents were looking out for him in a way he probably might not have seen or he didn't like. And sometimes, you know, people outside of you might see something down the line that you can't see. And they don't they feel like this path isn't the path that's going to be good for you. So Mace proposed an idea, even though we're not sure if. This is the actual cause. We're just proposing this idea and life. And it's so crazy. Watch. Good. I'm going to say something that probably really be really controversial, but I want you to think about this. When you think about the Bryants as a family, right, as a as a husband and as a father and as a mother and a wife. When when they say, I don't want this for my daughter, I mean, oh, I don't want this for my son. Could it be? that they saw that this wouldn't end out well. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes as I know as a dad and I don't know how you guys, I would want to hear how you think as a dad, sometimes you just know that this is not going to end well. So that's another way to look at it. Like they could have been saying this whole time. Yes, you love her, but this is going to go down a path that's not going to turn out well. And we're looking at that. What I'm saying is I I totally disagree. Not and not what you're yeah. saying is cause what I'm saying, I disagree with your point. And I and I, I would be protective of my son. We said that about Jalen Green, like, where's yeah. his parents at? Yeah. You know, she but the thing about it is she turned out not to be Adrea. He met yeah. her at a video shoot, so niggas was thinking she's gonna be a video vixen. But the whole time she was with Kobe, I ain't hear no scandal about her. I mean, and I could be wrong. I could, I, I'm just saying. No, what you're saying is 100% right. 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 I'm, I'm saying these two points are able to be right. What you're saying is 100% right. What Mo is saying is 100% right. It's like stat. When they say the biggest, the biggest decision you're going to make in life, other than your faith, is the person that you spend your life with. So even though she didn't... She didn't um, cheat. Let's say she didn't cheat. It's just it went down a path that didn't end well. You know, I mean, I'll regardless get, get of how saying. we look at it, it didn't end well. He's not here. I, I, I get what you say. What I'm trying to say is decision. It doesn't make her a bad person. But if I join, it's just like me, right? If I married a woman in Vegas, my life would be different today. I married somebody in Mississippi. It took me down a whole different road. Doesn't mean that it's the woman's fault. I'm just saying decisions take you down paths. It's a crazy point, but it's is is really is some truth to it. Because he's not here. Just like me, right? Mm -hmm. I'm here, I'm here with you. Right. Me and you don't speak for 20 years. Mm -hmm. Soon as we get back together. Something big happens. That means that my destiny and your destiny was connected. There's some people that I met one time. Every time I do something with them, it goes wrong. 
doesn't make them a bad person. Our destinies are just not together. So there's people that you meet that they could take you off your journey somewhere else and you'll end up with a different outcome. Doesn't make them a bad person. But these two people were not meant for each other, but they still chose to go with each other. Does that, does that statement make sense? Not that she's not. Do you understand the concept? I, I get it, but I also feel when you say destiny, he had four children by that woman. Three, three. I mean, three are still here. God bless the dead. Yeah. The other three are still, I mean. I get those, what you're saying. Those are me. blessings. Those are blessings. No, I'm, I'm not saying they're not blessings. I'm, I'm just, I'm just I, giving I, you I the, agree with the, Kim, the idea. I get it. I agree with Kim. I, you you not understand what he's saying. Like I get, I understand I, yeah, what he's saying. Get yeah, your de What I'm trying to say is your destiny. Like when you're put on the earth, there's somewhere you're supposed to be. Yeah, you're right. Right. When you're put on the earth, there's somewhere you're supposed to be. See, Pastor Betha is giving on that game from the spiritual realm. You know what I'm saying? Like, check it. Remember, God said in Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah. Before, when, when I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Look at how real that is. Like, that's how powerful God is. Before you even were placed into the person you're going to be coming out of, God already knew you. He already had his purpose for you. Check it. Look. This is the call of Jeremiah from the Lord. This is how God plans your life when you have a high call. The word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as a prophet to the nations. And Jeremiah said, Ah, Lord God, I surely do not know how to speak, for I'm only a child. But the Lord told me, do not say I am only a child, for to everyone I send you, you must go, and all that I command you, you must speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you. Then the Lord reached out his hand, touched my mouth, and said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have appointed you today over nations and kingdoms to uproot and to tear down to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. See? See? Before you were placed out here, God already had his purpose for you. And your choices, your choices, although you learned this along the way, they're taking you towards what God wanted you to do, or they're taking you away. And by, by the fruit, that you produce, you will know whose path you're going down. See, the fruit of the Spirit of the Lord is much different than the fruit of the world. The fruit of the world never satisfies you. The fruit of the world is what comes after your ego. Like, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. But guess what? It doesn't fulfill you because you know inside this ain't what I'm supposed to do. I'm bigger than this. The Lord has a calling on me, but I keep ignoring it. So let's go back to Mace. But you could pick any place. That's just like me, right? I took my life. I was doing music, right? And I said, you know what? I'm not going to do music. I'm going to go over here, right? Mm -hmm. So if I go over here and all of this bad stuff happened, no matter who I met over here, I wasn't supposed to go that direction. Okay. The, all you get to do in life is pick your choice, but the consequence, you don't get to pick. I get it. I understand that part. <laughs> deep shit. Yeah. Yeah. Real deep. It's gonna yeah, go like over. I could go out, I could go out right now. Friday, stop, I could right? go out right now and get a woman pregnant and we have a beautiful child. I still don't mean that that's what I was supposed to do. That's what I did. No, I, I get that. I get that a lot because, and not to the scenario, right? To to, to make, and, and this is not as deep as Mace is going, right? Yeah. 
No matter what, we all in this room right now. Yeah. No matter what you did in your life, no matter what she did in her life, no matter what Nick did in his life, yes, it all led to us being in this room mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. No matter what, no matter if, if and if she's making two dollars, <laughs> I'm making three, making four, you're making two billion. Yeah. Everybody, no matter what, is here right now. And Mace got deeper than that, but to put it on a general spectrum, this tonight on whatever date this is, we're all here. At this very moment, no matter what path you took to get in this room tonight. Yeah. Is there's is a such thing as life and then there's destiny. Those are two different things. Like you every person have something they supposed to do, but then they don't have to choose that. And that's what makes it your life. Like you could be meant to be something great, but you can decide something different, as we see people do all the time. And look. Remember, it's your life or destiny. This is like the same as God when he says, no greater love is he that lays down his life for his friend. The Lord laid down his life for us. And he tells us, take up our cross, lay down your life and take up your cross for him. The same way he did for us. So guess what? That's the battle and the war in the in the world. It's am I gonna serve me in the world or am I gonna serve God? Because it takes faith to serve God because you can't see him. You can see everything of the world. You know if I do this for this amount of time, I get this much money and I could buy this with that. So you're just serving the material. But try serving the Lord and see what blessings come your way. It's, it's going to be the answers to everything that you, but that requires faith because you have to trust in something you can't see and you have to do it for long enough to learn how God communicates. Let's go. But you always know the right decision because it's the end result that tell you you made the right decision or that wasn't the right decision. The you don't know until the end. You don't know at the end. Did you make the right decision leaving rap? I did. Everything now that we see playing out was all the things I escaped. Beast. But look, we're going to get into that. This will be short. A man plans his way, but God directs his steps. So in that moment, I mean, we're always trying to plan our path, you know what I'm saying? Because we, we're controllers. We want to control our destiny, you know what I'm saying? I did this, and I did it. I took this path, and I did it myself. But God directs your steps. And you never really know how you get to the end. That's where God is walking the whole way with you, or you choose not to walk with God and because he loves you, he's going to let certain things happen to you to direct you back. But that's if you stay seeking him. You can always choose to go fully with Satan. The car, the, the shine, the loom, the puff daddy, Craig every, Mac. the Craig Mac, the Biggie Smalls. The Biggie Smalls. So even though I made those decisions and it cost me money, that's why I got with Killer and they gave me the money back. I didn't lose no money. Destiny. Destiny. That boy good. <laughs> that boy good. <laughs> that boy good. 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 That's why he makes the big bucks. That's why he makes the big bucks. That was crazy. Yeah, I couldn't have played that. See, that's why it's destiny. You asked me the right question. We at the right place. This is how it's meant to go, man. What I do, baby. <laughs> so, look. Let's go. He was talking about how he left music and lost all a lot of money. And what happened, what happened all around him if he wouldn't have left music? What happened to everybody that was around him? 
now you're seeing the fruit. Mace is up. Life is good. Came through in a bigger way in modern rap times in hip hop and life with Cam. And we lost Biggie, murder. Shine went to jail for 10 years for doing, for shooting somebody, for taking the fall for a shooting for Diddy. Loon had to go, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, turn Muslim, went, lost money, blah, blah, blah. Um, Craig Mack, broke, died. Black Rob, drug addict, broke, died. These are all people who made hits. Now, let's go see back in the past when Mace talked about this to get the full story on it. This is from a previous episode where Mace talks about the Biggie situation. Yeah, there's a bunch of questions. I had a hashtag, ask Mace. The night that Biggie Small died, where were you and what did you do in the aftermath right after Biggie Small died? Hmm. Where was I? I was in the hotel. What people? That sounds like a Keefy D question. <laughs> no, they, they didn't say he was involved. They to, <laughs> yeah. I guess they knew everybody from Bad Boy was out there. Oh, yeah. I was in the hotel. I was actually in the hotel with, with a young lady. And when you heard this information, what did, what was your next actions? My next actions? What I, After what? When you heard Biggie died, did you stay in your hotel room? Did you leave out? Did you um, want to go back I to New actually, York? I actually was trapped in a hotel. Now I want to ask the question. <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean trapped? <laughs> it was about probably like 70, 70 or so bloods in the, in the hallway. I couldn't even leave my room. How'd you get out? Um, one of the, the Why guys, would it be 70 bloods in your hallway after Biggie Smalls died? Um, actually, after Big got killed, they was probably looking for more bad boy artists. And I couldn't even leave the room till, um, Gene Dill, the one, the officer came, had to come get me. Yeah. That's fucked up. Sorry. I was, I was left in, in, in LA. And that, and from that day, I always said, you know, I'm out of here. When you say you was left, what do you mean you was left? Like I was, I was Who left. Who left you? I came there with people. I didn't leave with those people. <laughs> you know how I go. My Find last question on this situation, because I see you, you must be saving this for the book. <laughs> how did you how did you eventually get out the hotel? After, where did you go when Gene came to pick you up? How'd you get back to New York or the East Coast or wherever? Um to my to my recollection, I think we um I think we had to go to Vegas or something like that to get back to New York. There you have it. That's where Mace was at, and that's what happened in the aftermath of Biggie Small's death. Well, we got info up here. Stats. <laughs> it's crazy when it's time for the yeah. movie. Man. <laughs> yeah. And no Keefy D. <laughs> yeah. ain't on no nah, time. That's so. why. That's why. After that, that's why I always kept that in my mind. Like, oh yeah, this I this I go right. when it get crazy. Hey man, for itself. I got your back, bro. Yeah. I, I take one for you. Pause, man. <laughs> My nigga, yeah. man. I ain't going to leave you. That's, a, that's, a, that's, and that, that kind of made me the way I think. So that's, it was kind of bad. I got your back, man. I I'm dig not- it. You know, listen, let me tell you something. When me and Mace was getting this together, Mace was coming to me like, niggas ain't going to be playing with me all weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Relax. <laughs> I said, yo, shit, calm the fuck down. <laughs> nah, Kim, I don't know where we stand at. I said, yo, my nigga. <laughs> but if you got to, you know, you got to take into consideration yeah. to what he's yeah. been through as well. So I was like, yo, let me get this shit done so <laughs> nigga ain't barking on me like that, man. I'm not like that, bro. <laughs> so I dig that 100%. See, now, this is Gene Deal. He's the one that's Puffy Security, but since back in the day, he was Puffy Security and Mason them. And so he's the one that really be telling the inside about what was happening with Diddy and how he was living and what was going on. And he was there for Biggie's situation. And so... A lot of this stuff that's coming out now, he's been talked about it. So it's not new to a lot of people. And we're just seeing it all get exposed. But here's him talking about getting mace. 
a few weeks ago, Mace, he went viral over some comments he made about the night that Biggie got killed. He said that after Biggie got killed, over 70 bloods went to his hotel room looking for him to try to kill him. And he said that she was the only one that came to his hotel room to get him. Well, Mace, you know, was from Harlem. And when I seen Mace run, driving around to California with Stevie J and his other guy in a drop top white Benz, you know, I flipped on him. I was like, yo, my man, you from Harlem. Don't you know these cats out here will tear your head down to the white meat? What's wrong with you? It's not sweet out here, bro. Then Mace said, yeah, I know. And he told me about the basketball game or something that he went to and they, how they was telling him that they wanted big and puff and he was all right. He was good. So Mace did not show up to the party the night Big got murdered. He said he was in the room with Brandy. Right. I called Mace that morning and uh, me and Mace spoke and then he was telling me all them bloods and everything that was out there. So I was with a couple of dudes that were from Black Hands, which is a part of the Black Gorilla Mafia. You know what I mean? And we just went to the end of his hallway. He said it was a lot of bloods out there. There's some, there's some dudes out there I wasn't recognizing. You, you know, I recognized, but I don't think it was, you know, he said it was like 70. When I got there, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't that many dudes out there like that. But he could have seen 70, 17, 20, 30. When, when you think somebody trying to get you, you and niggas is running the hallways because they know bad boy was staying there. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of dudes. So when I got there with my team and everything, dudes who was came to the hospital with us, we was good. So all we had to do was put them in a cab or, or, or car service so we can go where he had to go. And that was it. It was To me, it wasn't nothing. You understand? But to somebody in fear of their life, I can understand where he coming from. You feel me? So you see these clips that I put in here um, of Mace was a, a clip from back in the day. That was 2023. And um, this Gene Deal interview is from like four months ago. So basically I was tying this all together. So you get the point where Mace is saying like decisions, like he left bad boy and he was at the top of his career and lost a lot of money doing that. But if you look at Bad Boy's roster, everything that he would have stayed for, all that bad would have came to him, but he left. And then his end point is that by him leaving and him and, and Cameron not being, having a good relationship, not talking for 20 years. And then finally, um, coming back now and cam starts starts it, it is what it is and mace comes on the episode as a guest and they have such a chemistry everybody wants them back together this is where destiny comes in it was meant to be both of them um uh, maneuvering because now they bring a great a great part of the game for everybody now we got real commentators on sports and people that ain't scared to talk. And now, you know, the big corporations, ESPN, Disney, all of them. Nobody wants to hear them talk because we like to hear the talk, how we talk from where we're from, because we tell it straight up. You dig? Thank you, Killer. Likewise, Thank you, Killer. Thank you, On man. national TV. Yeah. Thank you, Killer. Yeah, thank you, too, Murder. I appreciate it, bro. Yeah, for real. There we go. Well, on that note, that is all the time we have for today. Maurice, thank you Yo, for Mo, being thank here. Thank you again, man. We appreciate you, man. Mo! Hey, you brought the love, best out today, hey, man. I love <laughs> so much. Appreciate yeah. you, man. Love. So look, to wrap it up, here's the here's the game that the Lord gives. And what you see is basically what Mace was talking about. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. 
Better is a little with righteousness than great revenues without right. A man's heart devises his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. A divine sentence is in the lips of the king. His mouth transgresseth not in judgment. That means righteous judge. A just weight and balance are the Lord's. All the weight of the bags are his work. And it is an abomination to commit wickedness to kings. It's an abomination to kings to commit wickedness. For the throne is established by righteousness. And righteous lips are the delight of kings. And they love him that speak right. And to wrap it up, here's the Lord talking to his people. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. That means he's already knowing your end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. That means he's going to open his ear to you when you pray to him. And ye shall seek me and find me. When ye shall search for me with all your heart. So to get all this blessing, you have to seek with all your heart the Lord. Just like, see, this is the Old Testament. Remember, Jesus came to fulfill the Old Testament. Watch this. So watch how Jesus wraps it up. It would take Jesus' words to put the stamp on it. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So this is where he's telling you, the world is, is not for you to lay up your treasures in. He wants you to lay your treasures up in heaven. And that's the faith there. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore in thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. That means one eye full of light lights the whole body. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. You can't serve God and these and the flesh. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, which ye shall eat or which ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, which ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold, the fowls of the air, the birds, for they sow not neither do they reap nor gather into barns yet your heavenly father feedeth them are ye not much better than they aren't you much better than the birds which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature and why take ye thought for raiment consider the lilies of the field how they grow they toil not neither do they spin and yet i say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? O yea of little faith, <laughs> therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So let's bring our sword and slay the evil today. You feel me? All right, that's all for today. J Midnight, Midnight Hustle, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Cam and Mace. Shout out to Gene Deal for talking the truth. And shout out to It Is What It Is. And let's keep promoting the wisdom and the kingdom of God and the game. You feel me? Because 
mastering the game with the Lord's righteous sword and his rule book is how we make it through all this evil that they're trying to pull off on us. 100.